Hi, my name's Emma, and I'm a huge book nerd. You're my library, always open for business, but you never show it. You're just sitting with it, but I know the score, and you're killing it. Today, I'm really excited because I'm going to talk to you about one of my favorite books of all time. Get ready for it. A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. This book is so amazing in so many ways. I just, uh, it warms my heart and also breaks me down into a million pathetic little crying, sniveling pieces every time I read it. And I've read it three times and I still feel that way about it and I love the movie and it's just so good. So, to start off, if you don't know what this book is about, it is about a little boy named Connor and his mother is struggling with cancer and Connor is struggling with coming to terms with the fact that his mother might die. And that is a really difficult thing for a little boy to deal with. And so Connor, one night, is visited by a monster. And that monster tells Connor three stories and at the end of the three stories, Connor's going to have to tell the monster his truth. Oh my gosh, I'm like getting choked up just thinking about it. Wow, okay. <laughs> Connor has no idea what this truth is that the monster is talking about. And when you get to the end and you find out what this truth is, it's just like, oh my God. For someone that has lost someone to cancer, and I have, it's so true. The way the grief is presented in this book is extremely relatable and comforting. It makes it makes you feel like you're not alone. You're not the only person who feels this way. And there's nothing wrong with feeling the way you feel. If you're angry, that's okay. There's one particular line in this book that just freaking gets me every time. You be as angry as you need to be. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Not your grandma, not your dad, no one. And if you need to break things, then by God, you break them good and hard. And I just, <laughs> there's so much anger that comes along when you're grieving. And sometimes it really just feels like that's not okay. You're not allowed to be angry because you're supposed to be cherishing these last few moments with the people you have and instead you feel angry and you feel like you shouldn't be because it feels like you're mad at this person for dying and that's not what it really is you're angry at the situation and it's perfectly okay to feel that way and i think this book puts it in the absolute best perspective i think anyone who is dealing with the loss of a loved one. I think this book can help with the grieving process, make you feel less alone and less debilitated by your grief, maybe. So for those reasons, I definitely think this book is incredible. Okay, now on to reason number two, a bit of a happier reason. I think the magical realism in this book is amazing. I think it's just so cool. The monster is real but then he's also not real he's a figment of connor's imagination and at the same time he's really there it all depends on how you look at it and i'm gonna go ahead and say right now that the rest of this review will not be spoiler free so if you haven't read this and don't want to be spoiled then bye bye thanks for coming but i want to talk about the details see you later so for those of you who have read this book i think the way that this monster is a representation of grief is really interesting. My favorite example of that is in the cafeteria when Connor's going to beat up the bully and the monster's like right behind him, egging him on and urging him on, but the monster's not really there and it's Connor who beats him up and he thinks that it's the monster. So the monster is turning violent because sometimes grief can be violent and I just, mm. It's just those little details are just so genius and brilliant. Another example is the way he treats his friend. Uh, what's her name? Mm, I can't remember. Lily. Lily. His friend Lily. She's trying to help him and she's trying to be so nice to him, but he's 
basically being a terrible mean person to her because he doesn't want to have to admit that his mom is dying and oh it's just so good also illustrations let's just talk about the illustrations i just love the illustrations they're just so pretty and oh you're just doing this video makes me want to read this book again to be perfectly honest i feel like this is going to be a really rambly video because i'm just so excited and i love this book and it makes me cry <sighs> okay let's talk a little bit book versus movie so i thought the movie was fantastic i love the way they incorporated the drawing and they made connor an, an artist so that the illustrations could still tie in and i just i thought that was brilliant i really liked that change i thought the acting was really good i loved the little boy i don't know his name i thought he was great and i thought his mom was really good too I, the, the grandma oh when the grandma comes home and connor's destroyed her living room and she just walks in and doesn't say anything like oh my god Ugh, crying, it's fine. But the one thing I didn't like about the movie is that Lily, the little girl, is not a character. I was like, what happened to her? She's important. I think she's important because it shows that Connor's isolating himself. He's not just being isolated because all the adults kind of treat him as like this delicate creature. But Lily was trying to still be his friend and he cuts her out. I think it's a great another aspect of the grief and another layer and there was no reason why Lily shouldn't have been a character. She totally should have been a character. I was mad about it. So yeah, that's my thoughts on Monster Calls and if you haven't read it, you need to read it. And that's all I got. Thank you so 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 much for watching. Please like and subscribe and leave comments down below. Love you, bye!